Well, it's now 2024, and our, our, our annual, we have two annual events, we've been at Saltex and at, here at Harrogate, but I'm with Dave Withers, Managing Director of Izeki, and it's lovely to see you again, Dave. Nice wonderful. To see you. Like last time, you'd just come back, I spoke, we spoke to you, you'd just come back from Pebble Beach and all these wonderful places. I had, I know, yes, and I'm very lucky I'm going off to Phoenix on Sunday to the GCSA show. So. What a wonderful, and you were telling me how last time, how many air miles you had, you had millions of air miles. Oh, yes, I do, but I'm, I'm happy to not earn too many more <laughs> uh, yeah okay. but anyway we're here back in Harrogate and we're standing in front of a machine that you'd like to tell me a little bit about a lovely orange color here a uh, um, remote controlled Remo yeah so uh, I just thought it might be worth highlighting this as a change obviously people are very familiar with our compact tractors and mowers and, uh, uh, and so on the Izeki product but we also actually distribute this Remo line as well and actually, we've seen a lot more interest in it this year than perhaps we have in previous years. And I think that's as people are looking more for electrical products and they're also getting more and more aware of the health and safety issues of mowing banks. You know, you get to see a lot of people either with um, fly mows on a piece of string, which, you know, you don't want Not to see. Not as many now as there was a few no, years back. But uh, still too many. And uh, also people just standing there, you know, putting a lot of pressure on their hips using a, uh, a strimmer or whatever. Something like this that can work up to a 50 degree slope, going around bunker banks, along ditches, areas like that. Very uh, attractive for a golf course. So I've seen more interest in this perhaps than we have in previous years. And uh, so we're quite excited about getting it. It wouldn't just be golf courses. I can see any number anywhere with boundaries and things. It looks like it's spot on for that. Yes, and in fact, it's up till now, most of our sales have been to those big contractors uh, who use it in those kind of applications. We do see it as well beside highways, running along the Arnco, uh, and areas like that as well. But but there's no reason why a golf course couldn't justify one themselves as well, which is why we've kind of been given a little bit of push at this uh, at mainly golf event. Yeah, yeah. And is this what? What else have you got in the pipeline? I mean, be, the, the R&D department's back at headquarters. They'll be working, beavering away very, very hard. What? Is you, can you give us a hint of where that yeah. direction of travel for that? Yeah, I mean, I think like all of us, it's no secret that we're all aiming towards electrification. And I think electrification and automation are probably going to move together. Um, I think um, when you just take a tractor or a big mower and electrify it, that's fine. It's all good, but you know, it's a very big, heavy machine, and I think you can kind of see the direction of travel of where the mowing industry is going to go. It's more like this. I, I think if you fast forward 10 or 15, 20 years, a lot of commercial mowing is going to look like that. Now, it might be autonomous, it might be a different brand, it might be something else, but that machine has been designed from day one to not have an operator on it. Now, whether you control it with remote control or with a brain, um, yeah. you know, that could AI. change. Yeah, that, AI, yeah. yeah. That could change. But I think the idea that you're going to have more and more machines where you've taken the operator off of the platform is going to be the future. You know, I look at it and I say, well, this machine is 48 inch cut, it weighs 250 kilos. That machine is also 48 inch cut, weighs 900 kilos. And the difference is, this one was designed to not have an operator. That one was designed to have an operator. And it's just enormous the differences you get if you say from day one, no operator. Yeah. And then all you're really working on is how I control it. So today remote control, but in the future autonomous. And that'll be able to can do it through the night then? Yes. I mean, again, I think you're now even further out. I think you're going to see this sort of controlled autonomy where the machine is working, but there is a physical somebody nearby yeah. um, just to keep an eye on it. I think the days of complete autonomy are a little bit further out, but mainly because of liability issues. Yeah, yeah, that's what we look to as well. I always thought for these, the, the, the smaller ones, theft would be an issue as well. Somebody coming and pop, but it doesn't seem Poss to have been a big problem. Possibly, yeah. I, I haven't heard of it being that common, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's quite exciting times. I mean, there's some of the remote robots as well, not just cutting, but other applications, spraying applications and aeration and that mm. type of thing. So the, when you look ahead, it's exciting times. It is, yeah. And I think when, when you look at our industry, you know, the amenity, ag, uh, amenity sort of golf and, and, and so on, we tend to flow down from what happens in ag. So if you look at what happens in the agricultural sector, often that then flows down to yeah. our market, just because ag is so much bigger. Yeah. And you can see it there already, you're starting to get the robots going down, weeding fields, robots are now harvesting, robots are... So you can kind of see the technology developing in ag, and all you've really got to do is look at that and say, downsize that, repurpose it, that will be the future for us in this industry as well. 
Well, we'll be further down the line when we're standing down, standing here this time in 2025 and we have the similar conversation. But great to grab a little bit of your time again, David, and uh, we'll see you soon. As always, lovely to see you as well, Scott.